Jesus. If you have your device, would you share this live stream? And if you would turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah 15 and 16. I, thought, I feel like this portion of scripture is so fitting every time that we come for preaching or teaching or whatever the reason would be any time that we are hearing the word of God. Would you read this with me? Thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. We cannot just come together tonight and hear the word. But it has got to get into our spirit that we would eat it, that we would digest it, that not only would the word come in, but the word would flow out from us. Amen. Would you lift your hands right now and let's thank God for the word tonight, the preached word, the taught word. God, that it would minister, Lord, you know every need here tonight. Oh, you know the hunger in the heart, Lord Jesus. God, fill those that are hungry, God. Oh, let it overflow in them, Lord Jesus. Oh, your word is joy. It is a rejoicing in me, God. I don't know what I would do without Your word is an encouragement. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we all raise our hands to the Lord? How many of you are thankful for what he's brought you through already this week, day 27 of week two of school? How many of you are thankful for what he's doing? Hey, folks, how many of you have seen some of your five? Make a change, make a shift. Have we got it? How about we, we take those five right now and we lift them up to Jesus right now? Hallelujah, God. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for your spirit, oh God. We thank you, God, that you will draw all people to you. Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, high five your neighbor, tell him it's all because of Jesus. Oh, look at you, the other person say, that's true.
was driving to work on Monday, and poor Brother Trevin has the great honor of working with me now. And I got to work, and I said, okay, you're going to have to play this. And I didn't even write him a lead sheet, so bless his heart. Um, the Lord put this in my spirit, and I'm going to sing it because I can't get away from it. It's a song that Sister Marcy used to sing when I was a younger, younger. Thank you, Lord, for the sunshine in the middle of the night. And I thank you for the sweet assurance that everything's going many of you know that we can thank him in every situation I know I'm safe cuz I'm sheltered in your arms sister Marcy sang that to me all night Sunday night all Monday morning she just didn't know it and it's all because of Jesus Oh, there's something about people that know where our hope is.
parents are glad. We had dad get baptized on, was it Sunday? Was it Wednesday? And now his sons want to get baptized in Jesus' name tonight. We're glad when families come together. So glad for Hudson tonight. We're going to have Brother Ben pray for him. Lord, I thank you for Hudson. Lord, I thank you for your hand upon his life. I pray that you honor the step he takes towards you today. And walk with him all the days of life in Jesus' name. Hudson Hildebrand, on the profession of your faith and your obedience to the Word of God, it's my privilege to baptize you in that all-wonderful, all-powerful name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. receive praise every word that proceeds out of my mouth I don't always do it but I that's my motive I think that ought to be our intent our motive and we put it into practice when we can he's done so much for us every praise is to our God I don't deserve any glory you don't deserve any glory we can honor one another but he deserves all the glory he's been so faithful God bless you Thank you for being in church tonight. We honor you for your faithfulness to the house of God. Amen. You may be seated. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you're seated? Because he's been so good to us. Welcome to everyone on this Wednesday night. Those joining us online, God bless you. I uh, uh, was... Uh, Maze this week where remember your tithe and offering but Sunday night we just made a statement about if you wanted to give to help brother and sister did you enjoy brother and sister Gibbs Sunday night from missionaries to Malawi wow wasn't that fantastic I uh what a what a great people and a great work that they're doing and uh, so far we want to thank the people of God and the church to supporting just the Bible school so far, you have given over eight thousand dollars to help to help them. Amen. That's roughly uh, sending fourteen students to Bible school for one entire year. So we're sponsoring basically fourteen Bible school students in Malawi to go to go for one year to learn the Word of God. Amen. That's awesome. 
something that uh, they can't do themselves. So thank you for your giving. But also remember your tithe, your regular tithe and offering here at Apostolic Center. Thank you for that. A few announcements. Of course, you have your QR code for the different fellowships going on. Make sure that you check those out and know the dates and times and so forth. But uh, regarding the uh, Bible studies, if you are doing Teach the Teacher or you happen to uh, purchase a uh, Bible study, those are now available uh, and ready for pickup in the bookstore. So after service tonight, you can get those. They're, they're there and you can, they're in and ready to be picked up. Our annual ladies conference, once again, is themed Good Company. And that's with Sister Donna Linville. That's September 10th and 11th here at Apostolic Center on Friday the 10th, 7 p.m. and Saturday, September 11th at 10 a.m. So two services. Be mindful of that. Invite someone. And our end time prophecy conference uh, will be Saturday, September 25th at 6 p.m. and Sunday, September 26th at, of course, our regular times, 9.45 and 5 p.m. Uh, God bless all of you. We're going to hear from uh, Pastor. We're glad Pastor's back. And um, the classes can be dismissed. Um, and starting next, next week, uh, we will all meet back in the sanctuary for the month of September. But So this will be our last night breaking out. And... Uh, so uh, next week we will all be in the sanctuary. So the rest of you that are here, would you say God bless Pastor Shine? Yeah, thank you. Praise God. Amen. Well, the Lord is good to us, isn't he? He's good to us and his protective hand. I thank God his hand was on uh, uh, Sister Missy Mathis and Sister Annette Collins and uh, his hands on Brother Burt Center. These are people that um, are in need of our prayers, continued support. I, I, I appreciate good reports and what the Lord is doing helping us along the way and so thankful for that uh, thankful for uh, our church your faithfulness is uh, to be commended and god bless you for that i um, i uh, also glad that uh, brother greg and amy crow are here god bless them we're glad they're visiting from texas and came up to see everybody and God bless them. We love them, appreciate them so much. Uh, I would like for us to turn to 1 John, if you wanna stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. 1 John, you have to go way back <clears throat> in your Bible and uh, Look at First John, uh, chapter um, five, and we're going to read verses seven and eight. Actually, let's just uh, let's uh, let's let's jump back to verse four. Let's let's do that. Uh, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Everyone say our faith. Boy, that was weak. And uh, uh, that ought to be a point where we get excited about that we are overcomers. By our faith, our faith, it's got to be personal to you, our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and and blood, and it is the Spirit 
that beareth witness because the spirit of truth. I want you to notice three elements here, water, blood, and spirit. Water, blood, and spirit. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. These three agree in one. Um, I, want, I want to talk just for us a little bit, to us a little bit tonight about truth, how important truth is, and uh, uh, from Scripture, uh, I believe the Lord's going to help us. And so let's ask him to do that. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for what we feel in this house. Lord, we honor you. We praise you. We love you. And we glorify your name in the name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. So I want to. I want to tackle just a few things, if I can, tonight, right off uh, the bat. Uh, truth is a word that is thrown around a lot of places. You know, and even people will say things like, uh, <laughs> they'll say things like, well, that's my truth. Well... You know, uh, to uh, quote a meme I saw the other day uh, uh, off of a, a, a sitcom, uh, you know, it's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> so you could say that the, the, the sky is red and we all know it's blue, but uh, just because uh, I believe that it's blue even though it's red, that's my truth. I think, uh, I think we're living in an hour where people pick and choose. And unfortunately, truth has been watered down just like everything else in society and people are offended by the truth. Jesus talked about this, you know, uh, uh, he said, uh, I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. <laughs> so truth is, is uh, uh, it's something we all say we desire. But truth, uh, truth is, is uh, it's a divider. Uh, and you either love it or hate it. There's no middle ground with truth. Either you love truth or you don't love truth. Or I guess there is the third option of your truth. But I want to talk just a little bit about that. And uh, Psalm 51 and 6 says that uh, we ought to desire truth in our hearts. This is David when he is repenting. I want you to notice what he says. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. He desires truth in our hearts, in our inward parts, in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You got you to gotta know truth. You got to desire it in your inward parts. You got to desire it uh, in your hidden parts. I was thinking this 
we, uh, a song came to me. Uh, it's an old song. I was trying to think of the date, probably, I don't know, late 70s, early 80s. And uh, uh, when I was uh, thinking and seeking the face of God, um, uh, it's that old song, I'll give you all, I will give you all, if all is what you ask for me, I will not withhold. Uh, but and the verse was the one that kept coming over and over in my mind. Um, uh, many times I said that I would give to you my all. I withheld a secret part. I thought that no one saw. And then I asked, is there not some other sacrifice I can bring? But if that's what you want, dear Lord, I'll give you everything. Truth is an all or nothing proposition. It's a possession that's never to be sold. Proverbs 23 and 23 says it this way, and you've heard it quoted, buy the truth and sell it not. Once you buy it, once you buy in, can't say there's some things that's not for sale. And truth ought to be one of those things. I've seen people trade truth uh, for the approval of their children. I've seen people trade truth for the approval of the congregation. I've seen people trade truth uh, because they got offended. I've seen people trade truth because they don't want to live a life of holiness. I want you to know truth is not for sale Truth is not for sale. It's never to be sold for no price. What are, what, are, what, are, what, are my, what are my grandchildren worth? What are my kids worth? Uh, you can't give me enough money. I can't buy enough life insurance that I wish that they were dead. At least not any I can think of at the moment. I'm kidding. No, we would never, we would never. There is, there's no price, no settlement, no policy that is worth what's valuable to us. Well, truth also sanctifies us. Not only do we buy it and we not sell it, but I will tell you what truth will do. John 17, verses 17 and 19, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Verse 19, and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they might also be sanctified. How? Through the truth. Sanctification is, let me, let me tell you how important sanctification is. Sanctification is things that we would call holiness, inward and outward holiness. Let me tell you how important sanctification is. Sanctification, when you really get down to the word, is that God separates. He separates the holy from the unholy, the godly from the ungodly. This is the way that he does it in scripture. He separates the sheep from the goats. The wheat from the tares. God is going to look at those at the day of judgment and he's going to say one of two things, either enter in, thou good and faithful servant, or depart from me, you work of iniquity, I never knew you. He is going to separate the sanctified. And so that's why truth is so important. It'll separate you for destruction or salvation. Okay. What does it also do? Not only does it sanctify us, it purifies us. First Peter, first Peter chapter one, verse 22 says it this way. 
seeing that ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Purified your souls in obeying the truth. So important. I'm not going to uh, necessarily go through all these, but we are judged by truth. Psalm 96, 13. John 12, 47 and 48. We're judged by truth. Go ahead and put that up there. Uh, see who I got back there. I can't see my glasses. My, yeah, I saw you wave your hand. That doesn't mean I can see you. Who else? Oh, Brandy Bayless? I mean... Brandy Overhill, is that right? Do you have your glasses on? Does she have her glasses on? Oh, okay. I've got I've got mine on. I feel, I feel like uh, oh well, I won't tell you what I feel like. Um, um, I, well, I, I'll tell you what I feel like. I need a new prescription. That's exactly what I. That's what I feel like. But put, put up uh, Psalm ninety six thirteen. I'm not going to hurry. Uh, I'm going to do what I get through, and then if that, before the Lord, for He cometh, for He cometh to judge the earth, and He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the people with His truth. Um, you know, we're going to be judged, and the world's going to be judged, but. Right, we're, we're going to be judged by what we know. We're to study it. Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 2. I love Paul's writings, the pastoral epistles. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of what? Truth. Truth. Second Timothy 3, 14 through 17, it says this. He says, but continue thou in the things that thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Truth. You got to continue, but continue in the things that thou hast learned. You've studied, you've learned it, continue in it. And so that's what we're seeking to do. I, uh, uh, I have really become concerned lately that... Um, there is an idea that that truth is is offensive to people, and you say, "How, well, how do you know that? How do, how do you know that truth is offensive?" I'll tell you how it is. Well, you, you don't think I'm saved? You, you you don't think I'm going to heaven? I mean, you can't even have a conversation with anybody. And, and I'm going to tell you what, it's not just out there, it gets in here. Well, we're all taking different roads, but we're going to the same place. Really? I didn't know it was doors. I thought it was the door. I didn't know it was the ways. I thought it was the way. I didn't know it was the truths. I thought it was the truth. We, 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 we get offended by it. Are you telling me that everybody out here that doesn't believe like we believe is going to hell? 
I'm laughing for the live stream. No one's laughing here, live stream. I'm glad you're laughing out there. You mean to tell me everybody's going, everybody, everybody's going to hell that don't believe like we believe? Uh, let, let, me, let me just do a little explaining to all of us. Just, just a couple things. The first thing is, is just because I preach something doesn't mean I'm the judge of something. The, the issue is you don't even want me to preach it. You're trying to make me something I'm not. I'm not the final judge. But I have been commissioned by God to preach his truth and let God take care of everything else. So when someone says, what well, do you think I'm going to hell? I don't know. After we get done with this Bible study and I teach you the word of God, you've got to ask yourself the question, am I lost? Am I ready? Well, I'll tell you what I ain't, I'm not going to do. You know, no one wants me to put them in hell, but everybody wants me to put them in heaven. Which camera am I on? I don't know. I don't know if I'm this one, this one, or this one. I'm going to look at the center one, the center one. Listen to me. Listen well. I'm not putting you in heaven and I'm not putting you in hell, but I'm telling you this, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. That's not my words, but I should tell you. And if we really believed it, we'd be teaching it more. We'd be talking about it more. We don't have to teach the teacher, and I'm glad we're doing teach the teacher, but let's teach the lost. So what they get offended? It's not my job to save people, and neither is it yours. Your job is to teach and preach and reach and love and care. Okay. All right. Well. So how, how do I know? Well, you, are you telling me all these people are going to be lost? Uh, well, I've been talking about this lately, so let's just, uh, uh, repetition is the art of learning. So let's repeat this again. God allowed Noah to build a big boat, and it wasn't just for the animals. God would have made a way of escape, Noah wouldn't be called a preacher if he had not preached to his generation. It's going to rain. <laughs> There's estimated that there were some 2 million people on the planet. Now, I'm not saying they could have all fit in the boat. Obviously, they, most likely they could not have fit in the boat. But maybe they could have. Maybe... Uh, I, I know this, either they all could have fit in the boat or God would have spoke to somebody else to build a boat along with Noah. This is the way we're getting out of here. But the reality is, is that God destroyed the whole earth, but eight, eight souls. And you're telling me that you can live any way you want to live, do anything you want to do, believe any truth you want to believe, and God's going to excuse you? Well, God is love. Yes, he is. Well, let me tell you what God loves. Yet, does God love me? Yes. But God is not a liar. God cannot lie, and truth is truth, and he's not going back on it. As much as he loves you, he loved those people. He said, my spirit will not always strive with man. I've done everything I know to do. 
What about Sodom and Gomorrah? Some have estimated there was close to a million between the two cities. Guess how many people made it out of the city? Four. Oh, is God mean? No. God had an intercessor named Abraham praying to save the city. Did God spare the city? No, he didn't spare it. How many made it out? Four. How many made it to the mountain? Three. One look back. What are you saying? I'm saying those are the examples that Jesus used of the end time. And we think we can make a mockery of God's book his words, his truth. Well, I know that's kind of tough, but I'm, I'm going to tell you that you got to live by this book. What it says is right and true. And I am not going to escape the tribulation if I don't live for God. Now, you won't hear this a lot of other places because it's too offensive to people. And I'm not trying to offend, but remember that thing where it said all Scripture is given by inspiration of God? Do you remember that? Let's go back there and take a look at it because I'm telling you, we're living in a nimby, pamby, those are Daryl Dowdy expressions, sissified, weak need generation. And it's not only in the world, it's in the church. None of us, I'm going to tell you, I'm right with you all on this. I mean, but think about it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. Okay, that's good. I can handle that. It is profitable for doctrine. But here's where we get an, an issue for reproof. <laughs> for correction. And for instruction in righteousness. We don't like that two to four ratio. We want somebody to tell us all the good stuff. Well, Paul's saying half the time you need reproof and correction. The rest of the time it's profitable for doctrine and for instruction, learning. We don't want that reproof and correction. But I'm going to tell you something. God, please don't let that be taken out of my life. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That staff was used to pull a sheep where it didn't need to go. It was giving it correction. It was giving it reproof of its direction. The rod, they would hit the sheep to give it correction, reproof. The Lord said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In other words, they keep me out of danger and they protect me. And it's a comfort to know that I've got somebody that loves me enough that says don't go hang out by the cliff where you can fall and be lost forever. See, I knew it would get quiet. But it's okay. We're on Wednesday night Bible study. Correction. You ever seen a kid that's not reproved? Have you ever seen a kid that doesn't take correction? Do you want to go out to eat with them? Do you want them to come to your house? No, you don't. 
Why? Because they're unruly. They're out of place. There's no correction. No one gets on them. No one, no one tells them, don't do that. Don't talk like that. Don't say that. We wouldn't want it for our children because we want our children to be liked and loved and adored and appreciated. At least I do. Well, God expects the same for his children. The Bible uses a word that we've made so terrible, and I don't normally say this word, but uh, Jesus was talking about how can you tell the difference between a son and a bastard? Well, easy by whether or not they'll take correction. Those whom the Lord loves, he chastises. Those that want to live by their own means and devices and wills and God said, I, I can't be a father to you. You won't listen to what you won't listen to what I say. Have I been in the book? All right, I got 11 minutes or so. What about this blood, water, and spirit? Blood, water, and spirit are so important because they are the elements of salvation. One in and of itself will lead to error and destruction. They all work hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other or the other. So let's talk just, if we can, I'd like to talk a little bit about this and let's see what the Lord uh, let's see what the Lord will do in helping us. So, uh, Sister, Sister Oberhill, with your glasses on, wouldst thou, and I'm going to be talking in the King James Version to you from now on, wouldst thou, no, hast thou not known? Uh, Give me Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. I want you to notice just a few things. Is this okay? Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Here's, here's some deep thoughts. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, or the heaven and the earth. Verse number 2. And the earth was without form and void. And what? Darkness was upon the face of the deep and the what? Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Right? That's enough. Sister Obriel, go back to verse 2. We have two elements, water and spirit. Where's the blood? All right? Revelation 13 and verse 8. And all that dwelleth upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. What? slain from the foundation of the world. Blood, water, and spirit. This thing is built on truth of blood, water, and spirit. You find it at the very beginning of the book to the end of the book. What about Mount Carmel? In 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, you find this, that story of Elijah. He's up on the mountain. Those people can't make a decision. Uh, they want to hold on to the world and idol worship and at the same time call him Lord. They, they were a mixed multitude. They, 
They didn't understand every, I mean, they understood it. They just, they just didn't want to make a decision. I want to hold on to this, but, you know, hey, I, God, I know you're in charge here, and this hasn't rained for three and a half years. But notice, after the prophets of Baal failed to produce fire, notice what Elijah does. You can read it for yourself. He prepares the sacrifice. Blood. 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 Then he tells him, go get water and pour water on the altar. Water. 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 And then the fire falls and consumes the sacrifice, the altar and the water. It's the spirit of God, the spirit, the fire of God falling. What do you have? You have blood, water, and spirit. What about the Passover? The Passover, you have the blood, the death of the animal, the crossing of the Red Sea, the water, and the cloud that led them, the Spirit of God, Spirit. Blood, water, Spirit. What about the tabernacle? You need to take a look at Exodus 29, Exodus 30, and Exodus 36. You better, you better take a look, look at that. What was it? it? Listen, it was blood, water, and spirit. When you came in the tabernacle, you didn't come empty-handed. You came in with a sacrifice. Don't walk in this place without being willing to give something. Be willing to let the Lord talk to you. Be willing to let the Spirit of God work and move in your life. You go in that thing, the first thing you saw when you walked through that door. And how many doors did the tabernacle have? One door. How many doors did Noah have? One door, and you've got one door, and his name is Jesus. <laughs> they came through that one door, you saw the bloody sacrifice. It was a mess, but the priest didn't stop there. He went to the labor of water. He had to wash, and then he would take that blood and pour it on the mercy seat. And the Shekinah glory of God, the Spirit of God would come down, the Scripture says, and lick the blood off of the mercy seat. What is it again in the tabernacle? It was blood, water, and spirit. Look at Nicodemus. I made reference to John chapter 3 and verse 8. But look at Nicodemus. Jesus tells him, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Water and spirit. But where's the blood? Well, you have to go and look at verse 14 where it says, "If Jesus said, if I be lifted up. That's not talking about worship. That's not talking about praise. Although we use that many times. He said, if I be lifted up. In other words, if I go to Calvary and I'm nailed to a tree and they lift me up and put me in the hole with my hands and feet nailed, he said, it's the blood that flows from Calvary. Blood, water, spirit. Blood, water, spirit. What about Acts? Acts chapter 2. What do we need to look at there? Well, let's, let's turn to Acts chapter 2. I'm almost done. Are you all right? Acts chapter 2. We're talking about this 
truth that we know, the beginning of the church. I know, I know, I know where you, you, you think I'm going, but just, just hold on a second. I want you to notice the three elements at Pentecost. First of all, the blood, Acts 2 and 36. Notice this, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. What are you talking about? When they crucified him, there was blood. There was blood. Notice Acts chapter 2 and verse number 41. There's the blood, 41. Here it is. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And that same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls baptized in water. And then Acts 2, 2 through 4. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. What are you, what are you saying? What are you, what are you teaching us tonight, Pastor? I'm telling you, it's blood, water, Spirit. You got to repent. Be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost for your salvation. What about Jesus? Well, let's take a look at Calvary. Let's close it out with Calvary. St. John. The Gospel of John, the 19th chapter. I want you to notice, if you will, the 34th verse. He said, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Blood and water. Say, well, where's the spirit in this? You just have to go up a few verses, chapter 30. And Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar. He said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Hebrews said he was offered through the eternal spirit. The spirit was resident there. What are you saying? I'm saying it's got to be blood, water, and spirit. You've got to repent. Thankful for those that have been baptized. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. But you also got to have the Spirit of God living inside of you. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in this place. God has not left us to ourselves. The first two, we can, we can do it on our own. We can repent and come to an altar and say, God, I'm sorry. We can go down in a watery grave and have our sins washed away. What he does in the water, we're obedient to go in. But that truth of God, the Bible tells us that it is for the remission of our sins, the wiping out, the washing out, the forgetfulness of sin. And the last step is the Spirit of God. I can't give the Holy Ghost to anybody. And neither can you. That's why the Holy Ghost is divine in its nature because the Holy Ghost will come. And when the Holy Ghost comes, it will not just touch you on the outside. It will come and fill you on the inside. And how do you know that I'm full? Because when you're full, you'll begin to speak things you never learned languages you never went to school for. God will begin to speak through you supernaturally. <laughs> Hallelujah. You didn't know I was bilingual, did you? I was bilingual by the time I was eight years old. 
God filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I began to say things I never said before. I'm not talking about gibberish. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, 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 things that people try to criticize. I'm talking about the same thing that happened in the book of Acts, chapter 2, chapter 8, chapter 10, chapter 19. I can tell you I got the same Holy Ghost that Peter got, and I got the same Holy Ghost that Mary, the mother of Jesus, got. I got the same upper room experience, upper room experience that the disciples felt. That's people today. Let's all stand. That's people today. They're glad to, to most of the time to do anything that they can do on their own. I'm telling you what, when it comes to the supernatural, people get fearful. I'm telling you, blood, water, and spirit. Pastor, are they all important? Absolutely they are. But I'm going to tell you, this thing starts with blood. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Before the spirit of God could come and move on the face of the waters, he had to be the lamb slain. Blood. Blood. Why is the blood so important? Because the blood is at the altar of sacrifice. The blood is in the death but the blood is also at the burial. It's at the laver. They got the blood. And then the blood is in the holiest of holies. The blood is in the holy. That blood, it starts. Why, 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 why are you making this point now? Because I'm telling you that everything starts with repentance. Everything starts there, but you can't stop at repentance. You got to bring the blood to baptism. Then you got to bring at the labor of water and you got to bring the blood into the holiest of holies. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the what? Holy Ghost. Why was it the Holy Ghost? Because they had the blood. They had the death. They had the burial. And they had the resurrection. Praise God. Well, the Holy Ghost is in this house. I want to encourage you to talk to somebody. I want to encourage you to tell somebody. You hold the most priceless thing in your hand that this world has. I'm telling you, this is better than Fort Knox and all the gold that's in it. This is, this is better than, 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 than being some, some CEO of a 500 fortune company and you're getting some golden parachute to retire. This is greater than any of that. It's greater than any education you can get. It's greater than any popularity and fame. It's, it's more important than money. I've bought in and I cannot sell. It's the truth. You have it in your hand. It's that pearl. The Lord said, don't cast it before swine. You don't have to fuss with anybody. You don't cast the pearl before swine, but you say, there it is. You want to know how to be saved? It takes blood, water, and spirit. You want to know how to make it? Blood, water, and spirit. It's death, burial, and resurrection. It's that 1 Corinthians 15. He said, that gospel that I've received, you've received. He said, he said, how that Christ died and that he was buried and that he rose again. Blood, water, spirit. The Holy Ghost is in this place. I think it'd be good for us just to consecrate ourselves again to truth. I'm going to live it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to do what he called me to do. I'm going to be what he called me to be. Come on, let's gather in. For Calvary's cost, 
and be willing to say yeah. I will give, come on everybody, I will give you all, I will give. My sacrifice is less than giving you my very best. Help me remember Calvary's cost and be with Come on, sing it from your heart, oh, I will give you all. I will give My sacrifice is less than giving you help me remember and be willing to say one of the things that I say and I'll leave you with this you can encourage some people in the Lord I have many times say well what, what about me? What about my parents? What about my grandparents? What about my aunt? What about my uncle? What about uh, my distant cousin? You know, what, what about salvation for them? And here's what I always say. I said, you're making it about the who and not the what. We're going to get ourselves in trouble when we make it about the who and not the what. What do you mean by that? I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not into judging the people, grandma, grandpa, whoever. All I know is what the Word of God says. And it's not about the who, it's about the what. What needs to be done? I need to be born of the water. I need to be born of the Spirit. And that can only happen when the blood, repentance happens. Amen. God bless you. Encourage 10 or 15 people in Jesus' name. If my sacrifice and giving you.